Hello and welcome to a video on algebraic proof. And in this video, we're going to prove this statement here using algebra. So let me just read it out first. It says the sum of three consecutive integers is always a multiple of three. So let's just clarify what some of these words mean. So first of all, what does the word sum mean? Well, the sum is just the result when we add two or more numbers together. So, for example, if I were to say the sum of two and three, well, the answer would be five because two plus three is five. Now, what, what are consecutive integers? What are consecutive integers? Well, an integer is just a positive or negative whole number. So, for example, one is an integer. We could also have something like 33. That is an integer. But we could also have negative numbers. So we could say negative eight. That is also an integer. That's a positive or negative whole number. And if we're thinking about three consecutive integers, well, the word consecutive just means one after the other. So three consecutive integers. So, and if we're taking the sum of them, well, that's just going to be one plus two plus three. These are three consecutive integers, and we are taking the sum of them. We're adding them together. So three consecutive integers here, we could say 33 plus 34 plus 35 and we could also show negative 8 plus negative 7 plus negative 6 so these are also three consecutive integers so what we're saying is that if we take the sum of these three consecutive integers we are always going to get a multiple of three so let's just have a look to see if that works for these three examples so 1 plus 2 plus 3, well, that gives us 6, and 6 is definitely a multiple of 3. It's 3 times 2. So it works for this first example. Let's see if it works for this next example as well. So 33 plus 34 is 67. 67 plus 35 is 102. So the question is, is 102 a multiple of 3? Well, an easy way to check this is just to add the digits together. And if the sum is a multiple of 3, then we know that this number is a multiple of 3. So 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 is definitely a multiple of 3, so this is a multiple of 3. And we could check that. We could do our bus stop method. So we could do 3s into 102. So 3 does not go into 1. So 3 goes into 10 three times with one remainder. 3 goes into 12 four times. So it is 3 times 34. So it, that works as well. Now let's have a look at this next one. And this is a bit different because we've got negative numbers. But first of all, let's just add these uh, integers together. So negative 8 plus negative 7 is negative 15. Plus negative 6, that gives us negative 21. Now, your first thought probably coming to you is, well, you can't have negative numbers are not, a, a, a negative number is never going to be a multiple of 3. And you would be right, because traditionally we think of our 3 times table. But we could also think about negative 21 is negative 7 times 3. So we could um, divide this by 3 and we would get an integer. We would get negative 7. So we could say that that is also a multiple of 3. So it works for these three examples. This statement, it works for these three examples. However, we're saying that it always works. Now, how can we prove that this always works? We can't test every single combination because there are an infinite number of three consecutive integers. So how can we prove it always works? And this is where algebra comes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the letter n to represent any integer. So we're saying that n is any integer you could think of. It could be negative 741. It could be 543,000. It can be anything. So we are saying we're just using the letter n to represent our um, integer. Now, if we think about three consecutive integers, well, what would the next number be after this number? So if n is our first number, what would our next consecutive number be? Well, that is just going to be n plus 1. So whatever n is, if we just add 1, this will be the next consecutive integer after n. So for example, if n was 20, our next number would be 20 plus 1, which is 21. So this would be our next consecutive integer. Now, what would the integer be before n? Well, if the one after n is n plus 1, the one before n has to be n minus 1. So again, if n was 20, 20 minus 1 is 19. So we would have 19, 20, and 21. But again, n can be anything. So if n is 500, we've got 499 here, 
and 501 here. So this just represents any three consecutive integers. So what happens when we add these three terms together? So let's just write this out. We've got n minus 1 and we're adding on n and then we're adding on n plus 1. So what does that give us? Well, we can just collect our like terms. So n plus n plus n, or well, that gives us 3n. And now if we think about the numbers, we've got minus 1 plus 1. Well, minus 1 plus 1 is 0. These, just, these terms just cancel out with each other. So all we are left with is 3n. So 3n, is this a multiple of 3? Well, this is definitely a multiple of 3. Because anything multiplied by 3 is, by definition, a multiple of 3. So we have just proved this statement. So the sum of three consecutive integers is always a multiple of three. If n is any integer, we can just substitute in any integer and we always get a multiple of three. But we could prove this a slightly different way. So let's just say n was our integer again. So n represents any integer. Now the next integer after n, the next consecutive integer would again be n plus one. But if we keep going this in this direction, what would the next integer be after n plus one? Well, that's going to be n plus 2. So again, we've got three consecutive integers here. So if we add these three integers together, again, we've got n plus n plus n. So that gives us 3n. And if we add our numbers together, we've got 1 plus 2. Well, that gives us 3. So is this an expression a multiple of 3? Well, yes, it is a multiple of 3. Because if we multiply something by 3, that's going to be a multiple of 3. And then if we add on 3, it's still going to be a multiple of 3. So we've actually proved it two different ways. So just to recap, when we're trying to prove statements like this, we can try some examples to begin with, just to see if it does work for a few examples. But then this can only take us so far. If we're trying to prove that this statement holds true for any number, or any set of numbers, then we have to use algebra to do that. And generally, we use the letter n to represent any number, but we could use any letter. But generally, we use the letter n. Now, in the next few videos, we're going to look at some more statements and we're going to prove these statements are true using algebra. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care.